Thank you. My mother said you're a smart girl. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Father, we ask your blessings upon us and we thank you for this time in your word as we wrap as we wrap up a difficult section okay. of the scriptures. And but thank you for the prophet Jeremiah who withstood everything. May we withstand everything. May we never feel like we're alone. May we be empowered by the Holy Spirit to live for you and the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say. Amen. amen. Jeremiah 49. We're almost done with Jeremiah. Yeah. And you're going to say all. This reminds me of, of the section of the Bible called Matthew 25. In Matthew 25, if we recall, Jesus speaks of a parable. But more than the parable, it's a reality, it's a, it's a living checkup. And the checkup is, we're all going to be judged by God. And when you read Matthew 25, you read in there, all the nations will come before God. Now, in Genesis chapter 10, there are 70 nations known at that time. That's all they knew about, was 70 nations. And so that's why in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sends them out two by two to the total of 70. So that 70 does have a significance. And so now at the end of Jeremiah, we've seen him be taken captive. He's going to Egypt where God's people should never go back. Because Egypt was a place where God freed us. It's a place of slavery. So we should never go back to our slavery. I don't recommend an alcoholic, once being free, to go sit at a bar anymore. Um, you, need, you need that freedom to say, I don't do that anymore and I don't go there anymore. The same with us. What's ever been a slavery, we don't do that anymore. We don't go to that place that has tempted us and perhaps destroyed part of our lives. So all these people that we're facing now in chapter 49, to the right and to the left, in the, in the strip of the land of Israel, they're the enemies. They've been used by God to wake us up. And when, you know, you always heard of the wake-up call. The wake-up call comes when your enemy is at the door of your church. You see, when we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming to church, and the collection is okay upstairs, what do we got to worry about? Do we worry about our programs then? No, we got hundreds and hundreds of people coming. But now that there's people not coming, and the programs are fragile at best, so we got to start thinking and praying a little harder than we have, just to keep our doors open. So we've gotten our wake-up call. So as we continue to go through 49.50 and 51, there's some more wake-up calls. We're going to get into, we're going to the east of the Dead Sea. East of the Dead Sea is a place called Moab. We did that last week with Ruth. And we looked at their god called Chemosh. You see, when you don't have the true God in your heart, you invent gods. And usually we invent them um, like the Egyptians did, you know, half animal and half human. So we can only create them in our image and likeness, though it's very much damaged. And when we do that, we, we, we can have animals' feet. Or if you went to Babylon, they had a flying lion with wings. So, uh, created by somebody, right? So we, we make up our, our gods and we say, here is God. And the children of Israel made up their false god in the desert in Exodus 32. And they said, behold the God that saved us. And the people would bow down and worship it. And it was a golden calf. <clears throat> and the calf father, Mitch Pacwa, told me is only about this big. And so all the girls had to take off their earrings and their nose rings and their belly button rings and their lip rings. And all their rings had just melted into this conglomeration of a facsimile of a camp of gold. And now we've got to worship it. Because of that one incident of worshiping the golden camp, 
humanity has been destroyed. But we can only be restored with the glimmer of hope found in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one that can save and give us any kind of hope and help, okay? So now we're going to go to the judgment. So I want us to think of Matthew 25, the final judgment scene. These people were allowed to do evil to the chosen people. These people could do evil to us, to the church. Right now, can I give you a church report? The church report is this. The church has never been looked so bad ever in the history of humanity than right now. The church has never been this low than ever before. Right now, uh, and I believe it's one of the signs of Jesus' the soon second coming, we are living in the greatest apostasy ever known to mankind. Where people are atheists now, they don't go, they don't care. It, it's just... But you know what I said to myself, self, I'm just going to do what God tells me to do. And I got to leave all the results to God, right? I got to live as a man of God. I got to live what the Word of God teaches me to. And I just got to go forth. And so when I look at these nations, again, you can hear similar stories. Because they were used to wake us up and to say, how could this happen? If you and I become men and women who live the faith strong, and I hope we are. The enemy can't come in through your door. But if we let down our guard, which we easily do, our door cracks open more and more, and the enemy is sitting in, a, in the pew in the church, sticking his tongue out of me. And then we wake up that one day and say, what, what the heck happened upstairs? When I say upstairs, I mean the church. What happened? Why are we like this? Because the enemy came in. The enemy told us lies. The enemy is telling our kids a bunch of lies. That's why your kids don't want to go. Anybody have kids? Yeah. They don't want to go. Because they believe the lie, as Romans chapter 1 says. So let's look at this again, and we can go through the, these chapters. Um, we don't have to linger on them, but uh, there's, there's a lot of good points in them, which shows our raw humanity. Now, because they were allowed by God to harm us, and take us into all these exiles. Guess what they have to happen to them? Destruction. They have to have their judgment day too. So even though they're coming in and doing evil, they have to have their judgment day. So remember when Paul writes Romans, who is on the throne? Nero. Well, we have all these weird leaders, even the one in, how many ever heard of North Korea? Yeah. You say, how did that guy ever get in? Mm. He's a nut. And somehow God allowed him to be in the leadership role. Now, he would not admit it to you, but God gave him the position of a leadership role. And so when he stands in front... So what's going to happen to, to North Korea if you follow this line of thinking in the Bible? North Korea has been a wake-up call, so to speak, but guess we already know what's going to happen to North Korea. Okay? 30,000 people escaped from North Korea to South. Just recently? Years. And four or five years, 30,000 people from the north wow. came into the south. Pra praise God that they're, they're safe, and I, I, hope, I wish them. But already the handwriting, if we follow this train of thought, what's the Bible lesson for us today? All those who oppose God are going to be... They're going to they're get... How do I say this and, and try to give you a good Bible sense? They're going to get theirs. And so now, uh, now, at the end of Jeremiah, it's kind of such a weird section. Because Jeremiah is already gone. Mm -hmm. And chapter 52 is, again, we're going we're gonna to read kind of in a little bit more details the fall of Jerusalem, going back to 586 B.C. So, so let's pick up and let's see these nations that, that are in front of us. And we, we, we encounter every step of the way their false deities, their power source. So their false deities is their power source. 49, everyone with me in 49? So again, it's... These are chapters you don't run to meditate on. So we're going to, uh, 1 to 22, we're going to look at a town called the Ammonites. Are they Ammonites? Ammonites. And verse 23 down to 27, we get Damascus. And then verse 28, we get Kadar and Hazar. Who are Kadar and Hazar? Kadar and Hazar are northern Israel where Solomon built some of his uh, kingdoms. 
And then verse 34, we go to a section called Elam. Now, one thing interesting about Elam, that is where Nebuchadnezzar was. And how many know on um, Pentecost Sunday, who was there? The Elamites. The Elamites. So they came into Jerusalem and they were saved by the Holy Spirit. So we can see all these nations. We have Damascus. And then the rest of the section on uh, chapter 50 goes against Babylon. So even though they, they uh, had theirs, and that's of course is what country? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. So look how much material uh, Jeremiah can say about Babylon. A lot of, um, and remember this is not in chronological order as we discussed. And in chapter 52 we have Zedekiah again. Uh, we thought Zedekiah was long gone. He's the last king of, of, of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. He is the ultimate last king, and what's going to happen to the whole Jerusalem? It's going to fall down. And what's happening today, these past weeks, if you've been following the news even today, they're fighting with one another on the Temple Mount. Now some of us were just there with Mona, and we were on the Temple Mount. And we wouldn't want to be there today. No. Brother Peter would not be able to take any pictures. <laughs> and we, we can't go there now because they're literally stabbing and killing people. Wow. Right now, right where we were. Mm. And when we were there, we heard shouts down below. Did you hear them shouting? Do you remember them shouting? And uh, none of the group panicked. But I just was thinking, Holy Spirit, just keep them away. Holy Spirit. Mm. They were Jews and, uh, and uh, Arabs yelling at one another about the Temple Mount. And um, the news is escalating to say there's going to be an all-out war there. And just present, this past week, Jordan was shooting some Americans and everything else. So it's escalating. And then behind the Jewish scenes at this moment is they are building, they got preparations for building the third temple. You can read about that in Ezekiel 44 to 48. When the Jews read Ezekiel 44 to 48, they, they only see one thing in there. Ezekiel 44 to 48, they see the, um, the third temple. So if you ask a Jew about 44 to 48, when Protestant evangelicals read it, they see um, the Antichrist is going to rise in the temple from 2 Thessalonians 2. When you ask a Catholic view of it, they see, because it's, a be it's beautiful imagery, and if I'm Ezekiel 44 to 48, it's very really beautiful imagery about the Son of Man coming, they see heaven. So those are the different views of uh, just those chapters. So the Jews now presently, and I just saw, I just saw it, I was just studying a little bit, and I just saw in Jerusalem, did you ever go to Jerusalem, ma'am? Mm -hmm. And Brother Peter did not get a picture of this. Brother Peter, I don't know why. They have a storehouse for the furniture of the temple. Mm -hmm. They're making already the furniture that will go inside the third temple. And it's a big room and they're making all this, you know, the menorahs and the... And, uh, yeah. and by the way, if, if you follow news, just hot off the press was they found in Shiloh where the Ark of the Covenant was. So they're, they're, there's a team now searching for the Ark of the Covenant. Now just to give you a little information, the, in the book of Maccabees, 2 Maccabees 2, it says before the end of time, the Ark of the Covenant will be discovered. And these people are out searching for it. Isn't that interesting? Okay, we're all caught up with all the latest and and why we're doing these chapters. So now all these people who have attacked and been Israel's traditional enemies, they're getting theirs. So he says to us, okay, we, we gave you an overview to the end of the book. Good stuff. Concerning the Ammonites. Now, for the Ammonites, remember there was Lot and he had a... His daughter uh, had incest with him. And when they had incest, they, they had a son called Ammon. So here's Israel. They moved over here, here's the Dead Sea, and over here is the present day country of Jordan, Moab, Edom, Adam, okay, they're all right here, over here on the 
the, the right of the, um, or we would say east of the Dead Sea. So that's Ammon. Next verse, thus says the Lord, has Israel no sons, has he no heir? So what happens to Israel? Now, what does it say, have no heir? What happened in the history? Lot, his daughter came into him, and they had Ammon, right? And so that's the question. How did, how did this come about that they're Ammonites? Does Israel have no heirs? Don't we have our own children? Do you got to be that bad to have your daughter with you? But that, that's a question there. That's a loaded question, isn't it? Okay. Has Israel no sons? Has Israel, uh, verse number uh, one there. What ha what, when, why then has Milcom dispossessed Gad and his people settling in its cities? Now Milcom is, uh, Milcom is their deity. They worship a god called Milcom. And where's Milcom? Who is the other god? Chemosh. This is Milcom. Okay? If you want to go on your computers now and look up what Milcom looks like. Mm -hmm. And, and what, do, what, do, what do the people do who attack us? They invent their own gods. And what do they say? There is no god. And so the person becomes what? Godlike. God mm -hmm. Amen? That's why when you have the Caesars and what do they all say? I am God. So they worship Milcom and dispossessed God. So if you go east a little bit, they don't believe in God. How many go east around here and they don't believe in God? It's called your family. <laughs> and they live right next to where, see the word Gad there? All the tribes of Israel had their own portion of land. Down in this part of the land, where, who settled there? The tribe called Gad. How many tribes are there? Twelve. Twelve. So this is, this is the tribe of Gad. Okay? That's a lot of meat in the, the that's a lot of history right there, right? Mm -hmm. um, verse 2. Therefore behold, bum, 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 the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll cause the battle cry to be heard against Rabbah of the Ammonites. So what's going to happen? Rabbah is, these are major cities, these are capital cities, so what's going to happen to Rabbah? There's going to be a cry. What's going to be the cry? What's happening to us? Because when we were taken over, did you find Gad on the map there, Miss Avon? Yeah. Okay, so that's the area that we're in right now. And that's where they would worship Milcom. Um, it shall become a desolate mound, and its villages shall be burned with fire. Now, anybody know what a mound was called back then? A tell. A tell. T-E-L. How many ever heard tell? Did you know uh, uh, Tel Aviv is in the Bible? It's in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3. It's called Tel Abib. A B I B. And what's tell, tell is the, the flat. It looks like this. It goes up. It's like a tree stump. And, and, that's, and then, um, so what, what happens then, it, it, the, the, Tel Aviv means the springs. Did you ever go to Tel Aviv? Were you in Tel Aviv, Brother Peter? We ate breakfast. Oh, you ate breakfast there in Tel Aviv. So, <laughs> Tel Aviv is in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 3, if you want to read about Tel Aviv. Uh, so, we, we don't take any tourists there to sightsee. It's just a, a stopover point when we get off the airplane just to crash a little bit uh, to the north and the south of us. Uh, right by Tel Aviv is where Peter, right over here, had his vision of the sheets coming down. And right there is a place called Joppa. And that's the very spot that Jonah took off for what? Sailing, sailing, right? So, and he had a well of a time, remember that? And so, uh, so uh, that's where Tel Aviv, so that's the significance. The Tel Aviv is right next to that. Amen? So what, what's happened to us is if we don't live our faith strongly, what's only going to say our church, guess what? Jesus and you, hold your heart on that one. You're going to save the church. Oh, no. How's that going to happen? You're going to, you're going to keep living your faith, aren't you? Yes? You're going to continue to be, both be strong, yes? And then people are going to get, get wind of it because Liliana and George are giving witness on Sunday, right? Aren't, aren't they? Amen? Yes. Amen? Are you excited about that? Yes. So here, come, here, here they come. And I, it shall become, look, look at verse 2, a desolate mound. So what's going to happen to this structure that goes up like this and like a tree stump. 
it's just going to look like a, a mound. Uh, absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely destroyed there. Uh, and its villages shall be burned with fire. How, what does the enemy do? Burn with fire. What happened to uh, Jerusalem? Burn with fire. And uh, right now we're entering, if, if you want to follow the Jewish people a little bit, right now they're entering into this, this week coming up where they have a voluntary fast because the temple was destroyed around this time. Uh, when you go into August a little bit, the temple is destroyed on the same identical time it was destroyed the first time. It's called the Ninth of Av, A.B. So when we read about all those fires coming up, this is the time that it actually happened, right around this time. The, the Jerusalem was surrounded three and a half years. And the three and a half years is Jesus' ministry to us. Because Jesus has to undo what the Romans did. So it, it, it's so rich. So what's going to happen, the Israel shall dispossess those who dispossessed him. Okay, if you underline that there, verse 2, dispossessed those who dispossessed him. So the enemy came in, knocked me out, destroyed and took away everything I have. But guess what? There's a problem with that enemy. God is on my side when I turn to him. He's going to raise me up, and then I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to dis dispossess what you dispossessed me of. <laughs> Can I give you another example of that? It's called the year of the locust is over. Joel chapter 1. When you see all these bugs coming in, there's about 5 billion in a cloud. And the locusts eat up everything. And God says, my people, if you come back to me, you, what the grasshopper ate, I will restore you. So here's what I think we should do gather together, live our faith separately and yet together. Build on one another here, yes. Build on the Word of God, yes. And God's going to restore our families, yes. Your sons and your daughters are coming back, yes. Aren't you getting excited yet? You don't look too excited. God's going to restore the church, yes. Yes. Charles is going to be singing and leading the way in church, and we're going to have packed, we're going to have packed church. So, I know one thing about the end of the story. God restores. So if you underline that there, Israel's going to dispossess what they dispossessed us of. They took it away from us. We're getting it back. Plus, it'll never be taken away from us again. That, that's a great verse, isn't it? So now, no matter what happened to you, or what's happening to you, when you feel like you have nothing to show, you're empty inside, you have no money, you did your best, how did this happen? You feel totally dispossessed. Guess what, you claim that verse for it. It's, you'll be the only one on your block that looks at a, a Jeremiah 49 two. I am not gonna be dispossessed forever because I'm a man, I'm a woman of faith. Good stuff? Then again, we have some um, cities, verse three. Well, O Heshbon, these are the cities, for AI is laid waste. Now, what is AI? I mean, how do you pronounce those two? AI. Two. A -A -A -I. AI goes back to the book of uh, Joshua. The first city destroyed was Jericho. Jericho. Do, 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 do. And they came in. How many people lost their lives on the Jewish side? None. Wow. Now, there was a problem with AI. They had a man there called Achan. And he had deities in his possession. And so they had to find out who, why we lost this battle. Now, if, we, if you and I are going to battle right now, you can't have deities in your possession. You know, you, you shouldn't have Buddhas in your, 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 your living room. Oh, no, you're not worshiping them. But, you know, I don't want to see a guy with a big stomach staring at me because Edna will complain that he can eat fruit and nuts and grapes and everything else. Amen. I, I personally believe you should not have pagan symbols in your house. That's just a personal conviction. So I'm going, oh, go on. But in the book of Joshua, in Ai, the town Ai, there was a moment, Achan, A-C-H-A-N. Achan had this, and they found out who he was, and what happened to him, he got stoned to death with his family. So I think in each, each of these things, when we read all these cities, we can see their false deities. We can see their false worship. Amen. Cry, O daughters of Rabbah, again a city. 
Clothe yourselves with sackcloth. What is sackcloth? It's the normal way of what? Repenting. Lament. Run to and fro from the hedges. Because when the enemy comes in, guess what everybody's going to do? Run, baby. Run. Amen? Next he says there, for Milcom. Oh, there's old Milcom again. Milcom shall go into exile with his priests and his princes. When they had their religion, they, had, they raised up their own priests. Because remember, everything is a copy of the true God. How many know Satan is called Lucifer? Does everybody remember what Lucifer means? I, it means light. Now, when you read the end of the Bible, what do, you, what do you hear there? The bright morning star. That's what his name means. Now, who's called the bright morning star? And please understand my context. In one sense, you could say God is the Lucy, Lucy, light. He's the bright morning star. So what's another synonym for that is Lucifer. I mean that in a good context. Mm -hmm. But now, what does he got to do? He's so dumb that he has to only copy what the highest is. So he says, I am the bright morning star. So he says, I am the Lucifer. So he has to copy. And here we can see that going on right now. That, that Milcom, which is only a statue, Milcom has his priests, and what they did there is they had orgies. They had um, their priests, they had uh, quote unquote holy prostitution. Can you imagine that? They had human sacrifices. Uh, we call a human sacrifice, say, abortion, right? Mm -hmm. So they had all those things going on. Let's see what, see what the, the power of their milkum did. And that's all throughout the culture. If we study our humanity and our history, that's been going on. So do you think God should judge um, Amon by now? Do you think there should be an Ammon around? By the way, it's a present-day country of what? Jordan. They have named after the... The river, right? Why do you boast of your valley so faithless, daughter? Why do I call you a daughter? You're faithless, okay? The, who trusted in their treasures? Again, people want what? Money. Where your heart is, there is your treasure, Jesus said. Who will come against me? Uh, you know, when you're, when you're so stuck on your deities, you say, come on. We got everything going. Who's going to come against us? Now, what do you hear that line before? Who's going to come against us? If God is with you, who can come against us? Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. If God is with you, who can come against? Amen. Do you believe that God's with you? Yes. Then you're going to say to the rest of humanity, make my day. <laughs> so he, he, here, we, here we can see uh, who trust in their treasures, who will come against us. Verse 5. Behold, I will bring terror upon you, says the Lord of hosts. So who's doing all the fighting is the Lord Sabaoth. What's host? Host means all the angels are coming and coming. And when Jesus comes in his soon second coming, now, I don't know which side you're going to be on the soon second coming. How many want to be on the front side when you see him coming? Or how many want to be on the back side walking with him in? <laughs> so how many know if you're a believer in Jesus, you're in a win-win situation? Say, so anybody have somebody that died that loved the Lord? Nobody? Yes. Okay. And so what's going to come in the soon second coming? When Jesus comes, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 Jesus is going to come with all his angels and his saints. So when we look up, there'll be Jesus front and center, and behind him, a cloud of witness, all the angels and saints. Can you see that? And you're like, Mom, is that you up there? <laughs> of course, your focus is Jesus. Amen? So which side? Are, so how many of we're all in a win-win situation? If he should come in our lifetimes, I'll vote for that. I vote tonight, by the way. Everybody ready for your, your lift? Yay. Okay, you ready for your lift? You look like you need a lift. It's so, so it just like, are you ready to go up? Okay, you, you, you ready? Or, or you're gonna come? You're gonna come in a, a cloud of witnesses. Is that gonna be exciting? Can you imagine this? Can you imagine? This? All right, can you imagine that? Behold, I bring terror upon you, verse five, from all who are around about you, and you shall be driven out every man straight before with none to gather the fugitive. So when God sends the destruction. Guess how many fugitives are going to be? None. What happened to Ai? Just that one, one group. So what's going to happen? So if you, if you put a little note in there, this is going to be total destruction of the enemy of God. God's not going to leave um, little pieces of remnants allowed. Now who's going to be the remnant that's going to stand in front of them? Every believer here. 
Remember, Jesus spoke of Matthew 7, Jesus spoke of the few. Verse number 6, but afterwards I will restore the fortunes of the Hamites. Isn't God good? I knock them out permanently and say, you're gone. You know? uh, put in there the mercy of God. Now right next to Ammon, here's, here's the Jordan River, here's the, the Dead Sea, here's Ammon. There's another one right next there, it's called Edom. Now, Edom is famous for who? Esau. Everybody right in there, Esau. Do you remember Esau, Jacob, and Esau. So this is, Edom means red, R-E-D. Okay? So he's the one that the, the brothers were fighting and he went, he's, he slipped to the east again. So let's look at this next group. Concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom more in Taman? Now, Taman was noted, again, Taman is the capital of Edom. These are all like the capital cities, okay? In Taman, what, what did they do? There was a lot of uh, what? Uh, people stroking their proverbial beards and doing what? What were they doing? Getting a lot of wisdom. So they would sit around philosophizing. So, so we have here in, in, in this verse, uh, is wisdom no more in Tema? Who's now has counsel perish from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? All right, now tell me about your wisdom now. You have all these people. It'd be like Harvard University. With all, you know, how many think, oh, I went to Harvard. What do, you, what, do you, what do I think when somebody says Harvard? What do I think immediately? Oh, they're so smart. Anybody, anybody do that? No. Oh, you say, oh, they're, so uh, you say, yeah. oh, they're so right. they're well, well, at least, see, when you say you're from Harvard, you, or I went to Princeton, what would you think? I'm smart or my father's rich, right? I, I usually give them a benefit of a doubt. I say, oh, you're too smart, because uh, I don't think I can get into Princeton, because I, I'm, not too, I'm not too smart. Amen? So what, what do we have? So this team is the center of school of philosophizing. But how many know... Our, our scholars cannot stop the judgment of God coming. Right? And what, what happens to all of our scholars? They don't believe in the judgment of God. I mean, I've talked to a lot of quote-unquote smart people, and boy, are they stupid. <laughs> and and when, when, I, when I bring up the word of God to them, what they say, they laugh at me because of of my belief in the Word of God and said, come on, that's a book some man wrote it and everything else. But if some man wrote it, you who are so smart, you don't even understand it. Okay? So, that they got to build on ridiculous. So, so we can see from Taman, verse 8, flee, turn back in the desert. So what's going to happen to Edom? You better get what? Running, yes? Oh, inhabitants of Eden, oh, I will bring calamity on Esau upon him. The time when I punish him. Now, was Esau a nice guy? Remember the story of Esau? Genesis 21? Remember, he sold his birthright for a pot of stew. If it was Yoki Bolognese, I would think about it, alright? So, um, you know, it's spaghetti and meatballs and everything else. But he sold it because he was famished. And then his mother, um, he went, they went out uh, and they put on... Uh, uh, Jacob, uh, the, the hairy part, and, and the father felt him and says, your voice sounds like your brother, but uh, you can't grow hair like that. It must be you, Esau. Yeah. And he says, oh, Dad, I'm just practicing ventriloquism, okay? So it's really, <laughs> it's really me, it's really Esau. And what did they do? They had fights with one another. So what's going to happen to Esau because he opposed, he opposed the plan of God? Esau is going to have his day, right? So I think a, a summary statement is they're all going to have their day. Look out, baby. So look, underline verse 10. I stripped Esau bare. Now, what, what's Esau, why is he stripping Esau bare? What did Esau have? What did his mother, remember he had those beautiful clothes on, and, and what, what did she do? She took Esau's clothes and dressed mm -hmm. Jacob in them. Remember? Mm -hmm. And then in Genesis uh, 21, 2021, and... So what did he do when he appeared before his blind father? He said, uh, hey, uh, you took my clothes, but he put his clothes back on. What's God going to do to those clothes again? <whistles> Take them all off, right? Because your clothes don't mean anything. So we can see here, uh, again, a, a good sense of, of Jewish history for us. And he's unable to conceal himself. I mean, once you're stripped, tell me, no, you can't conceal yourself anymore. 
His children are destroyed, his brothers and his neighbors, it's no more. How many children did he have? He had a lot, didn't he? And how many children did Jacob have? Twelve. These are the twelve tribes of Israel and his brothers and his neighbors, he's no more. Leave your fatherless children, I will keep them alive. Now, what, what is one of the worst things to happen to anybody? The worst thing to happen to anybody, the two, the two disasters that face us is a widow and an orphan. And an orphan. So what is God saying to the people of Esau? There's going to be a lot of orphans. People are going to be fatherless. Right now, we are in fatherless America. Kids don't have any fathers anymore. They don't know how to lead. We have men that don't know how to be spiritual leaders. And if you don't raise your kids up spiritually, they're going to suffer. That's why I'm after two interesting gentlemen in my life to raise Billy One and Billy Two in their faith. These are my great nephews. Hey man, I got plans for those two little kids. And their, their parents look at me, what? What are you gonna do to our little kids? So um, I, I want them raised in the faith, amen. And so what do I got to do to their fathers? I got to give them the right foot of fellowship, okay? Uh, a good kick, you know what I mean? A good kick a room. Because I don't want them to have a spiritual fatherlessness. And so the two groups of people who suffer biblically are those who, are, who don't have fathers in the faith or orphans and widows. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, you got to treat anybody here a widow? You gotta treat widows very, very kind because if you don't treat the widows kind, and how many widows can drive you nuts? Everybody shake your hand. Yes. If you don't treat the widows very kindly, God will deal with you again. It'll be, it'll be a, a, a bad experience. So we're moving along. Esau, it doesn't look good. And let your widows know. So if you circle there, verse 11, if you connect the children and the widows. See, these, are, these both are called defenseless people. Verse 12. For thus says the Lord, if those who did not deserve to drink the cup must drink it, will go unpunished. Remember Jesus speaks of the cup? Oh, yes, yes. Jesus is going into Jerusalem. And James's mother, we'll call her Big Mama James. She says, Lord, you're going into Jerusalem. But how about my boys? They're good boys. Make one of my boys the governor. Make the other boy the man. They're such good boys. <laughs> and the other ten went, yeah, they're, 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 they're. <laughs> right? They wanted power. And then they said, can we take your cup? And what's the cup? It's the cup of suffering. Now in the Bible, the cup means two things. From Isaiah chapter 50, 51. The cup means two things. It means you're blessed with a cup. Because what does a Jew got to do every Shabbat? Take Merlot wine. No, a, a different word than Merlot. Takes his wine and you got to welcome in the Sabbath. So every Jew has to do what? Drink wine on the Sabbath with a cup of wine. Okay? And what do we do every Sunday? We take the cup called the blood of the Lamb. We take the cup of the blood of the Lamb and we drink that. For us. So we follow, but we, we go a whole lot deeper than the blood than then we go into the blood of the Lamb, yes. So you, you can see there the cup means what? Punishing. You shall not go unpunished, you must drink. What do you gotta drink of? You gotta drink of your punishment. You for I have sworn by myself. Now when God swears, you don't want to mess with God when he swears, that means it's gotta what? It's gonna happen. Because if God doesn't if God swears, the first time he swore, by the way, is in Genesis twenty two. When he promises to send a lamb, G Genesis 22, 15, he promises he's going to send a lamb of sacrifice. And of course we know the lamb, we say it every, every day we go to church. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, what? Grant us peace. Okay. I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, that Bozra shall become a heart. Again, another city. A taunt, a waste, and a curse. Now, when we don't follow God, what do people do to all of us? They mock us. How's your religion doing? You follow God? And what do they say to me? How's your priest doing? When, when the priest uh, thing broke out, I got off a jitney. I was going into, to, um, to the UN in, in, uh, to preach at the UN in New York City. 
As soon as I got off the bus, one guy said, Hey, Reverend, how are the boys? So immediately there's a mocking. There's a mocking going on. There's a hissing going on. There's like, oh, you're one of them? But now when they look at our church and the shape she's in with all the complaints, and, and that's why the news has got to do what every night? They've got to put us on front and center. Because what are they trying to continue to do? Destroy us. And did you notice too, when Protestant evangelicals are, are, are having their own problems, do they put them on the front page? They put the Catholic Church on the front page. Why? Because they want to destroy us. Will they? No. No. Right now, what day and age are we in? We are in the greatest humiliation ever in the church. We are absolutely being humbled and really being humiliated. Has anybody ever been humiliated for your faith in the Lord? Humiliated? Oh, that, that church, oh, them. All our cities shall be perpetual waste. Verse 14, I've heard uh, tidings from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. All right, what's a messenger? Angelos, an angel, right? Gather yourselves together and come against her and rise up for battle. So they're, they're getting a little notice, right? This, this is the time of the end. For behold, bum, 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 I will make you among the nations despised among men. So what's going to happen to the Esauites? Despised. Now, who, who is the most despised nation on the earth right now? Israel. Remember, Israel is now surrounded by 175 million enemies. You know what my shocking surprise is? Shocking surprise. My shocking surprise is, with 175 million Muslims, why they don't attack. I personally believe um, that, that Israel is, going to, is the most powerful force and God's going to come to her defense very soon. Right? And there's, there's been miracle signs of that in the sky. So look at, look at the sky. Gather yourself, here it comes. The horror you, you inspire, verse 15, has deceived you. The pride of your heart, you who live in the cups of the rock, who hold, why are you living in the cups of the rock? You're what? You're scared. So what do you got to do? You got to hide. Hold the height of the hill, though you make your nest as high as the eagles. You, you got to run. Let's let's go either under the cliff. Let's go to some high. Let's get away from this hole. Are you going to be able to get away from it all? No. No. What does it say there, verse sixteen? I will bring you down, baby, down. Uh, Edom shall become a horror, verse seventeen. Everyone who passes by will be horrified and will hiss at it. And when Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbor cities were overthrown, says the Lord, no man shall dwell there, no man shall sojourn in her. Right now, you said the blue one works. Yeah. Here is, here, this is my, oh here it is again. This is my dead city. Here is Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Mm -hmm. Edom is over here. Um, Moab is there. And what's going to happen then is as these two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, were destroyed, what's going to happen to you? It's going to be destroyed like that. So Sodom and Gomorrah is mentioned. Now, remember I told you many times that when you preach biblically, prophetically, you've got to mention Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 19. I told you in our church, um, I've been listening listening, listening, and listening. I don't hear the prophetic word anymore. What's a prophetic word? Son of the more is mentioned. Mm. I heard in the beginning, and I hear the message of it, Pope Francis will say a lot, the devil, the devil. He, he even mentions that World War III has begun. He already has mentioned that. We can't live with one another. So Eden is going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what's happened is right now people were mocking us because I would stand up in front of you and preach there is a real Sodom and Gomorrah. But Father X, Y, and Z got up there in the church and said, it's a nice little story, it didn't happen. But guess what? They just found where it was. They found a city that has been utterly obliterated, two of them. And guess what they're called? Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> so guess what they said? Whoops. We told you it was a nice little story. But guess what? We found traces of where they were. 
been so obliterated were these cities because of the evil inside them. They were blown apart. Mm. Amen? And that's where our evil is, is. That's why I'm looking forward to move out to the West or Midwest. I'll, I'll stay in Kansas and everything else. I'm trying to live there. And, so, uh, and Brother Peter will get me out of here and everything else. Because we're, I'm too close to New York City, baby. Sure. I'll take, and I wouldn't want to go to Korea and forget that country too, you know? So uh, we got to, uh, maybe we should go to Switzerland or uh, Liechtenstein or something like that. Just a nice little, uh, uh, nice little country where we. Can, by the way, if Jesus comes, come right, Amen. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Can you, can you see this happening right now? Do you, do you think this report is up to date? Verse 18: As Sodom and Gomorrah were underlined there, and their neighbor cities were overthrown. And so now, what, what are we gonna report here? You're Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And guess what? We just found out a new fact from Genesis 19. What fact did we find out? Other cities were destroyed too. Wow. Yes. They even got sea caucus. <laughs> <laughs> Hasbro Creeks. Cape May. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody that goes down those places? Mm -hmm. Not off the face of, uh, of the map. Mm -hmm. So here's a little interesting thing. Put a little note there. The other cities were knocked out too. That's why we read parts of the Bible to understand the other parts of the Bible. Do you know we've got to read some New Testament facts to find out what happened in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? That's why we've got to have the whole uh, counsel of God. Verse 19. Behold, like a lion coming from the jungle of the Jordan against a strong sheep. What does what does lions do to sheep? <laughs> it says lunch. <laughs> now, how many ever heard from Isaiah uh, chapter 11? The lion and the... It doesn't say that, by the way. It says, the wolf and the lamb. So when I go to see the Christmas show up at Lancaster, they have a big lion there. And I'm like, you guys are supposed to be so Mr. and Mrs. Bible? It's a wolf, baby, a wolf. But I don't go into the office to correct them. <laughs> But notice here, it's the lion. So maybe they were, they were saying, it, but, oh, Reverend, it's in Jeremiah 49. Oh, that's where the difference is. So now lions and lambs are what? Enemies. So who is the lion? Is the enemy. Who are the lambs? We're always viewed as the lamb. Who is the lion? Jesus. Because he's from the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remember, the enemy has to copy that which God does. Are you getting this? So here, here's now a copy of, of what's going on. So if you underline that there, I will appoint her, uh, make them run away from her. I will appoint her over her whom I choose. Who is like me? How do you say who is like me, everybody? Michal. What word do you hear there? Michael. Michael. Now, when you're, when you're facing other deities, when you read the book of the crossing of the Red Sea, Exodus 15, what happened to Pharaoh and all his men? The water crushed them. And what did they say there in the, in the song? Who is like God? What does this say there? Who is like God? We're warring with one another. You're not following God and you're getting yours. Amen? You're getting yours. Amen? So if you don't like who, who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Now an interesting thing too about shepherds. Was Esau a shepherd? Yes. Yes, he was a shepherd, right? Now, in the Bible, guess what most of the people do? Despise shepherds. So when Jesus says to us in John chapter 10, verse 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, John chapter 10, he says a shocking words, I'm the good shepherd. But here's this good shepherd, I lay down my life for my sheep because the lion's coming. In 1 Peter chapter 5, what do you hear? The lion's coming, but it's not Jesus. Watch out for the lion that's coming. Mm -hmm. And then we read as you and I like in Amos chapter 3 verse 12, we gotta reach into the lion's yeah. mouth and pull out the lamb because you could still see his feet in there. Mm -hmm. How, and this is when the lion just grabbed the, the lamb. Can you, you got the image? And all of a sudden we see to our heart the lambs are going. But you and I got to reach in and pull from the lion's mouth 
the lamb ready to go in for dinner. Wow. Wow, this is, this is a little bit scary here. Amen? Verse 20, Therefore hear the plan which the Lord has made against Edom, and the purposes which he has formed against the inhabitants of Taman. What's Taman? It's the capital what? City, right? And even the little ones of the flock shall be dragged away. What's going to happen to the little people? Gone. What happens to a lot? What happened to Jericho? The first city that the people... I hate to tell you this, the kids died too. The little ones. And say, well, they're, they're too innocent. But why do they have to die? Because they were influenced by their parents. Now, I love my two little grandnephews and my nephews, and they were all out of the line. And if anything ever happened to them, I'd be devastated. In fact, the little one just went in and he was copying my brother, his grandfather, and he sat on the couch, put on my brother's glasses, went down like this, <laughs> and picked up the newspaper and started reading it. My brother flipped down went nuts when he was watching him copy. He goes, come on, pup, come on, pup, come on, pup. And my brother just loves that, you know, because flattery uh, is a great form. So what happens is they were destroyed, the little ones. Now what does Jesus say about little ones? Such as the what? The kingdom. Do you understand that why in another sense? These are so easily picked off and destroyed. Uh, Father Steve was just telling us a four-year-old, Inez, just had a heart attack, a four-year-old. How can a four-year-old have a heart attack, huh? And so, um, she's so little. And there's so little. So can you see another reason why Jesus says, such is the kingdom. But here, sadly, what's gonna happen to the Edomites? The kids are gone. What happened to Jericho? All the kids were killed. Wow, this, this is not good, amen? Now, what do we have about killing the kids? We have what hurt. Next, little ones of the flock shall be dragged. Surely their foes shall be appalled at their fate. When you see your little kids being killed, that's terrible. Look at verse 21. At the sound of the fall, the earth shall tremble. The sound of their cry shall be heard at the Red Sea. What happened at the Red Sea, everybody? The Pharaoh is going in with 600 of his big guns and others. Why is he doing that? Because he just lost his kid. So they're going in to avenge the kid that died, the firstborn, do you remember? Yes. They're going into the Red Sea and what happened is not only did their kids die, they're gonna die now. And so they were appalled that someone so young would be. Maybe Pharaoh's son was about 12. Really, really wiped out. And if anybody here, uh, that's why I don't understand the planes. Oxygen mask, put yours on first and then your kids. I would think of putting my kids on first and then mine, you know? But no, they tell us to put mine on first and then hit the kid with the oxygen mask. But because we want them to live, don't we? But then people are going to be so shocked because our kids are going to be destroyed. And what is that going to really ultimately do to everyone in this room? You have two sons, ma'am? What have you ever seen them wiped out? Would that kill you? It would absolutely kill you. Yeah. It would devastate you. You wouldn't want to live without your two. They're your life. You thought your, your fiancé was. No, it's, <laughs> it's your kids. Amen? Are you getting this? So here in Edom, don't go there, Peter, for vacation. You hear that, Brother Peter? <laughs> Do you understand the, the idea of the Red Sea now? Verse 22, Behold, one shall man up and fly swiftly like an eagle, spread his wings against Basra, Basra, again another town, and the heart of the warriors of Edom shall be in that day like the heart of a woman with her labor pains. So what are they going to say in Edom? Oh, oh, ladies, do you remember your labor pains? <laughs> when you suffer, when you suffer, again, you can see the prophetic tone. It's like birth of a woman giving. Amen? And they didn't have the the C-sections and all that stuff, amen. This was the, this is the normal painful way, amen. Are you kidding that? Then he says, now, let's look at uh, J Damascus. Everyone know where Damascus is? Syria. 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 It's the capital of Syria. All right, now, there's an interesting line. I'll, I'll give you, this is hot off the press. Do you know St. Paul's conversion is mentioned in Zechariah 9? Verse 1 down through um, 8. 
it talks about Damascus as the capital of Syria. Now, as privileged on my last trip to Israel, I went, I was, I was about uh, 20 feet away from stepping into the country of Syria. There were no fences, just little, little yellow flags on the ground saying, don't walk here or a bomb can go off. So I decided not to walk there. I decided not to walk there where the bombs, where the bombs would go off. Amen. So I saw, I saw Damascus. Did you see Damascus, Brother Peter? And now here's what's going to happen to Damascus. And right now, Damascus is a mess. And by the way, the only, there's only one reason I want to go to Damascus right now. Well, two. One, because they have St. John the Baptist's head there. You want to get a shot? Muslims have St. John the Baptist's head. I don't know how, i got to say more of the history how they got St. John the Baptist's head. If you want to go there, you've got to fly to Europe and then take another plane and go into Damascus if you want to try to get in there. Nobody wants to try to do that, okay? They, they say they do. And the second reason I would like to see where Paul was on Straight Street, he went straight on Straight Street, okay? So, uh, I just, just to kind of be there in the wall that he went over. Um, outside that, I would have no desire to go to Damascus. Let's find out what's going to happen to Damascus. Concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are confounded, for they have heard evil times against cities and rivers. They melt in fear, they are troubled like the sea, which cannot be quieted. The sea, the sea is quite what? Quite noisy, isn't it? Now, what does that mean there? If you underline the word sea, Y A M, it means trouble. What is this? The sea is what? Moving. Choppy and moving, and, and you know that a what? A storm is what? Brewing. Brewing, right. Which cannot be quiet. Damascus has become feeble. She turned to flee and panic seized her. What's going to happen to Damascus, everybody? It's not going to be good for Damascus. Anguish and sorrows have taken the hold of her. There is again underlined that the woman with what? Labor, Labor pains. pains. How the famous city is forsaken. The joyful city. Her young men shall fall into squares. All the soldiers shall be destroyed in that day. Everything can be wiped out. You're going to have no army to come against the army of God because what do we keep hearing about the army of God? The army of God is called the Sabaoth. The Sabaoth. You can't fight God. And there's some people who don't believe in God, think they're fighting God, but you're going to, you're going to face God one day. You can't fight, fight the mighty God. Amen? So here, what does Damascus say? We'll bring soldiers against him. What is Satan going to say at the end? I will do that. Look at verse 27. I will kindle a fire on the wall of Damascus. Now, how many know somebody with a wall? What did Paul do? He went down the walls of Damascus. Hmm, interesting. And so the vow of the strong soul of ben Haddad. Who is ben Haddad? He's, he's the ruler. He's the ruler back then of the walls of ben Haddad. Hmm. And then I will kindle a fire. It showed the vow of the strong of ben Haddad. Now, we come to, we, we shift, and we go, this is going up toward northern Israel. These are some of the cities that Solomon built, Kedar and Hazar. Uh, so let's, let's find out what happens to these cities. So these are Solomon's cities. Concerning Kedar, kingdoms of Hazar, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, struck. Thus says the Lord, rise up, advance against Kedar, destroy the people. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come down like this. So when he came down like this, here's... Uh, Usually you never have a Bible study in these two cities, Hazar, and what's the other one? Kedar. 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 So Nebuchadnezzar comes down and is going to take over Kedar and Hazar from the north. He's going to come down, sweep, 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 so that he can become the king of kings and the lord of lords. So he will, that's where all these are mentioned. So what's going to happen to Kedar? Their, their tents and their flocks shall be taken, their curtains and all their goods. Their carmel shall be borne away from them. And men shall cry terror on every side. What did Jeremiah cry out all from during his terror. terror on every side? <coughs> How many know he had a lot of terrorists? Everywhere you look, the, the, what's going to happen before Jesus comes? Terror on every side. Yeah. Now, there's coming, I told you many times, what is called the great what? Tribulation. Tribulation. I hope and pray, God, you and I are not alive on that day. Because you know what we're going to hear? Terror on every side. You say you and I were locked in here. Imagine being with you for the rest of my life. Lord save us, okay? So when, when, imagine going outside and terror on every side. 
you, you can't walk in the street, you hear the enemy's coming, you can't go that way, the enemy's coming in. Brother Peter can't get in with his car. I mean, it's just terror on every side. No more Yankee games. Terror on every side, Brother Peter. Okay? So, I, I mean, it's just, it's just like they're so close to us. So you scream out, terror on every side. Look at verse 30. Will you wander away in the depths of what happened to Hazar? Hazar is up in the north of Israel. Okay? Flee. Everybody get run. So notice now the enemy is here, 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 here. Remember we just read the, the first passage here, here, here. So when we look at chapters uh, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, they're all, here are all the enemies. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is the enemy of all the enemies. Where does Nebuchadnezzar come from? Babylon, right? You're off, right? Yeah. So here, he's just sweeping all the way down, sweep, 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 killing north, east, south, and west, and ultimately, Babylon's going to be what? Destroyed. So, what a picture we get here. And here, here, here he comes now. Look at, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has made a plan against you and formed a purpose against you. He wants to be king of kings and lord of lords. You're in his path, baby. You're a dead man. And he has planned against you. Look at verse 31. Rise up against the nation at ease and at dwell securely. What are we going to see at the end of times? War, war, and war. <coughs> see all this? You say, oh, it's an ancient passage that we never read. And guess what? We'll probably never study this ever again. This is, this is only once through, baby. <laughs> and guess what we're going to hear in the end times? Wars and rumors of war. Daniel chapter 2. We're just going to hear about this. And every day in the news, I pick up something about Korea. And they said definitely within a short year from now, they will have the ability to strike Hawaii and Alaska, at least. So, if you're going to Alaska or Hawaii, quickly do it now and get back. <laughs> Did you hear in Hawaii they're already preparing for a... So what do they got school in September like we do? They are now teaching the kids part of one of their drills is what happens if we're under a nuclear attack. Mm -hmm. yes. Can you imagine going to school in Hawaii, Alaska? Mm -hmm. wow. Part of your curriculum, you know, when, when they ring the bell for fire drills and everything else. Remember we just had fire drills years ago? <laughs> now we have. I, w I was in the, I was teaching the school, of course, and you know what we have, we got, all the schools have to do this? we have somebody enter the building drills. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, what? Because oh, yeah. we don't have metal detectors yet, so mm -hmm. put down the window shades, lock the door, and everything. I'm like, wow. and I said, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, <laughs> and lions. And, and now the kids are, are going to do nuclear test drills in case wow. the, the island's attacked. Mm. I don't know if they have to go downstairs or I mm. if you want more on the drills, we'll get the drills ready. That's happening right now. Mm. Yeah. You? Yes. Nuclear, nuclear, what did you do? No. You had to go down the cellar? Yeah. Under your desk. Oh, no. Under your desk. Well, <laughs> if you live in Hawaii, it's back. If you live in Hawaii, amen? Do you got Olivia's, do you got Olivia's uh, plant? No. You got her plant to save that kid? <laughs> Yes. Are you sure, Brother David? He's just, he just sitting back there. So this is scary. Rise up a nation at ease that dwells securely. Now, what, what's a nation at ease? If you underline that verse 31, what's, what's a nation at ease? Ah, oh, nothing's going to come. Ah, oh, everything's okay. How many ever heard those people? Now, I, forgive me, I, I don't want to be an alarmist, but I want to tell you the truth of this of the second coming. Well, you're doing a good job. <laughs> my job, my job, Miss Kathy, is to scare the hell out of you. So far, so good. No. This is, uh, uh, look at that verse 31. We're at ease, everything is. And, and I, I like the story in uh, Amos chapter 4. The women were so at ease, they would sit on their divan and just eat little grapes. Gloop, gloop, gloop. And you know, Amos got so mad at the women, you know what he called them? A bunch of cows. 
Look at it. Amos chapter 4, verse 2. He calls them, you cows of Bashan. You're a bunch of cows. Okay? No, they're just sitting going, they're watching soap operas and going, uh-huh. And all, all the Miss Cathy's back in that time. <laughs> And, and you have no protection, there's no bars or gates that dwell alone. Their camels shall become booty. You, your camels are outside, you know. The, the herds of cattle spoil. I will scatter to every wind those who cut corners of their hair. I'll bring the calamity from every side of them. What's going to happen? It's every to the north, east, south, and west. Amen. Hazer shall become a haunted jackals. Or Hazer is up in the north of this room. Okay. Hazer shall become a north. And an everlasting white, no man shall dwell there. I never heard of anybody visiting Hazar these days. Mm. When, when I was with Brother Peter and, we were, and Miss Kathy, and we were, I remember we were going to, uh, where were we going? We were going to Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus said, On this rock. Do you remember we were in that little restaurant we, we looked at and we saw the snow cap? We saw Mount Hermon. Do you remember that? Yeah. Now, if you look at Mount Hermon and you go down a little bit, Hazar is right there. If you if you if you want to see, when you looked at the mountain, just look at just look at the mountain in your eye. Go back to that scene now. Look at look at yeah. down, and Hazer would be right over to the right. So when he was saying Hazer, of course it might have went over our heads, but Hazer is right there. And Hazer was a Solomon city, so that's the area right by the Caesarea Philippi. If you want to get it, if those of you who've been to the whole, have you been to the Yeah, Mona, do you remember? Do you remember you saw the snow cap? And right, right in front of the snow cap mountains is Hazar and Kadar. Okay? Yes. You know, no eyeballs staring at me, okay? <laughs> so, um, look at verse 34. Now we have Elam. Remember, say Elam. Elam. Now, Elam um, is also going to be destroyed. So, Elam would more be over here. And remember, Elam is going to have a Pentecost experience if you look at Acts chapter 2. There's going to be their Elamites. And also, Elam figures in the book of Esther. Have we ever heard of Esther? Mm -hmm. yes. And, and where, where is she going to be? Uh, she's going to be by the Elam experience. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah. So now we have a location. We go all the way back to five, 590s already. We go. So notice again, there's no what? Chronology. Chron chronology, okay, right? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 35. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Behold, bum, 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 bum. I will bring the bow of Elam, the mainstay of their, their might. I will bring upon Elam the four winds. So what was their strength? They were what? They were archers, weren't they? So notice that each, each section that attacks us have their particular strengths. So Elam, and, which would have their Pentecost experience in Acts chapter 2. That's, right, that's why we should do a study one day on just all the names of, of the, uh, what happened and uh, um, Pentecost. Because when I hear you pronounce them, when you're doing the reading, I go, oh. <laughs> okay? Especially when you get to Phrygia. That's a P-H-Y-R-G-I-U. You go Phrygia or Phrygia or whatever. <laughs> it's Phrygia, baby, Phrygia. <laughs> so, um, so here comes Elam. And, and you put a little note there, they're gonna have the Pentecost experience. And then they're around during the time of Zedekiah. This is before the fall of Jerusalem. See how it's all jumbled up in the time sequences? Yeah. And I will bring upon Elam the four winds, verse 36, from the four corners of heaven. Now, heaven's always seen in four corners. Why? The Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant right? Because the Ark of the Covenant was, every time you see here, 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 mm -hmm. here, uh, you might think northeast, southwest, mm -hmm. yes. But it's more than that, it represents the Ark of the Covenant. Because all creation from Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 represents the Ark of the Covenant. And as those people right now, this, this week I just read about it, uh, they're, they're searching for the Ark of the Covenant. Well, this is exciting, amen. If they find it, I want to go see it, of course. And I will scatter those winds. Scatter means what? Diaspora? Mm -hmm. The scattering. Um, to all the winds, and there shall be no nation, and those driven out, Elam shall not come. I will terrify Elam before their enemies, and before those who seek their life, I'll bring evil upon them, my fierce anger. How many know God gets angry? Yeah. 
you, you know, we're, we're living in a day where you just want to hear love, pussy, willows, and balloons. But how, when's the last time you heard a good sermon on the anger of God? I don't think so. <laughs> no. Nobody mentions it. Have you noticed that? Yeah. One day at San Antonio, I preached on the anger of God. I even remember the date, I think the third week of October. <laughs> And they say, nobody ever preached on the anger of God. Mm-hmm. The anger of God is against sin and rebellion in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Never against a person, but what we carry inside. Mm-hmm. Well, what are you carrying inside? Let's check it out. Holy Spirit help us, right? I will send the sword after them, and then I consume them. Verse 38. I will set, throne in, uh, set my throne in Elam and destroy their king and princes. Because what is everyone saying? We are kings. So what's God going to do? Every throne, Mary prophesied. Do you remember the Blessed Virgin Mary? What did she say in Luke chapter 1, verse 46? The mighty will be cast down from their thrones. Hello, you need to read Luke chapter 1, verse 46. People of the long. There's going to be no throne that's going to be above the throne of God. That by the latter days, I will destroy the fortunes of Elam. Now finally, we're out of breath now. We get to Babylon. And look how much information we got about Babylon. 50 and 51, okay? And, and the, so 50 and 51 is all about Babylon. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, right? So mm. Iraq today. Let, let's see if we can see some similarities. Mm. And then 52 is, again, it finishes with the book of uh, the end of the burning of the temple, which is very up to pro to this particular time. In this calendar, we are again going to celebrate uh, the uh, the ninth of uh, ready, ready to go through. You think we could do this? We we only got about five minutes left. You think we can really, really hit this? Um, let, let's see what's going to happen at Babylon. Never can answer. Okay. The word of the Lord can, spoke to me concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans. I ever say Chaldeans? Chaldeans. I love when you try to say Chaldeans. Oh, you know, Chaldeans. When you say that word to me and people are reading upstairs, the Chaldeans, I'm like, Chaldeans, all right? It's with a K sound. Everybody say that with me, Chaldeans. All right, don't you ever mispronounce it in my presence again. So the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations to proclaim, set up a banner. Now what's a banner, everybody? A banner is a big flag. Remember when... um, you're on a trip and somebody wants to put up a, a polka dotted umbrella. There's so many people, so look up in the air and you gotta, so what's the matter? You gotta look up and see where the, at another time it's called an ensign. Now in the book of Isaiah 11, they're holy ensigns of God. And what's the banner? Now let me share the greatest banner there is, the cross. Jesus says these words, when I am high and lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. So we got to lift high, that's John 14. When you lift high the ensign of the cross, then people can look up and see. But now, in the soon second coming, that's why it's got to be up so everybody can what? See it. And John in the book of Revelation said when he appears, and all these signs are coming, it's in mid-heaven. Now where's mid-heaven, by the way? If it's over here, happy you can see it over there, happy. but I'm over here. So what's mid, what does it mean to have been in mid-heaven? We can all see it. We can all see it with the same distance. And so when Jesus comes, we're all going to see him. We're all going to what? Behold him. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Then he says to us there, Set up a banner, proclaim, conceal it not. Babylon is taken. Bel is put to shame. Merodach is dismayed. Okay? Class, who are those two? Gods. They're gods again. Very good. You learned the lesson. Notice that in each of the beginnings we hear, we have Kamosh, we had Milcom, and now we have Bel. It's not uh, from uh, Beauty and the Beast. We have Bel, and we have Merodach. Okay? And her images are to be put to shame, her idols are dismayed. So what do you think the first thing going when God gets angry with them? What's the first thing going to be destroyed? The images. The images. Remember we had uh, a lady, what was her name that they worshipped? The Queen of Heaven. Yeah. Remember I told her she was a skinny, she was a statue that went like this. And she had about a thousand breasts on her. Because she was feeding her faithful. Mm. So that was called the Queen of Heaven. Oh. 
Okay, so in mockery of the things that Christians might call true. Are, are you getting this? So remember, Satan's got to do what? Copy us. Is and so, the same as Artemis? Yes. So if you put a note there by verse 2, so what's the first thing going to be destroyed in all the time? Get rid of your false images. That's why years ago we would knock on wood. I tried telling the priest this about two weeks ago. Well, get on. Because he, he was doing it. And I was trying to tell him, I was trying to tell him the Jeremiah, he didn't want to hear that, so he's wrong, and uh, I wouldn't want to be him on judgment day. But anyway, you know, get rid of you know, your rabbit's foot and stepping on a crack would break your back and everything. And I think I stepped on that crack a long time ago. So, but, so how many know that the first thing that God's going to get rid of are your idols? They're going to crack. So I, how many have an idol-free house? It's, I bet there's one real big one there. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> you never seen one of them? Oh, the TV. Nobody has one of them? I, I believe when Jesus comes. Crack, baby. Smash, baby. Amen? They're going to be gone. They're, and your kids are going to be playing on that. Honey, it's the end of the world. I gotta finish this game, Mom. <laughs> but honey, you don't understand. Um, Jesus is our roof just blew off, and um, and uh, all right, that's nice. Let me finish this game, okay? Oh, take a picture. Of it. Take a, take a selfie of Jesus coming. Out. So, uh, for out of the north, the nations. Who's the north? The enemy comes from the north. Has come upon against her which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell, both man and beast shall flee, flee away. Everybody, what's that? When man and beast, the end of creation. Mm. Put a little note in there. With God, when one creation ends, a new creation begins. Is that good? Do you see that in there? So what do you have man and beast running away? Who's going to go faster, your camel or you? <laughs> Maybe you've seen some of those movies, what are they called, it? with the, all the animals in it? Uh, the, the, what are they called? The animation. Yeah, the animation movies are out there on, on the end of the world and everything else. With the squirrel, they're always trying to find the nut and everything else. And what's that, what are those movies? So, um, so the, they did like four or five of them. So you always see those animals talking to one another in animation and they're, running, they're always running. They're always running. In verse 4, in those days and that time, I, the, the, says the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come, and they shall seek the Lord the God. Why are you weeping? Because finally your enemy is what? Destroyed. And so this enemy from the north is going to come and sweep through Israel. And when it sweeps through Israel, finally it's over. Imagine we're surrounded by terror and all of a sudden it's absolutely quiet and it's all over. And then we're going to cry and say it's over. So what did Jesus say on the cross? Finished. It is finished. Yes? Are you getting this? They shall come ask the way to Zion. Now what's Zion? Oh, this is really beautiful. Zion is, here's, here's um, the wall, the temple. And over here is Mount Zion. What happened on Mount Zion? Pentecost, resurrection, and the Eucharist. And also, a fourth thing for Catholics, Mary was assumed into heaven then. So a lot of action happened on Zion. Did you ever go to Zion, Brother Peter? Yeah. And the Jews were just on Zion proclaiming Messiah is coming. They were just on Mount Zion proclaiming the Messiah is coming. Mm -hmm. Let it come. So they're getting excited over there, aren't they? And Brother Peter is still talking to Bangladesh and everything else. So <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he doesn't understand their English, okay? <laughs> so that's Zion. Now, Z Zion Zion's a very... If, if we were to go back to Israel, what would be the most exciting spot for me to take you to again? Zion. That's where all the action happened. Of course, Calvary. But Jesus, it doesn't end there, and he rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. So go on with me there as we wrap up here. And people of Judah, Judah is the south, where Israel is, where Jerusalem is, verse 5. They shall ask the way to Zion with faces turned towards saying, Come, let's join ourselves to the Lord and... In an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. Wow, look what God has done. And this is the same thing in Isaiah chapter 2. If you look at Isaiah chapter 2, they said, Come, let us go together. You know what we're going to do in that day? 
if we should be alive, and turn on the right, turn on the left, turn all over. And all of a sudden, there's no more bombing going on outside. It's all quiet. You and I venture out, and we see rainbows and light and the sun. And then we're going to hug each other. We're going to say, let's get back to, and stay with God now. And the Bible says that even in a literal sense, in uh, Zechariah 8, 20, that we're going to be clinging to each other. Ten people will be clinging to us. Can you imagine? You mothers remember when your little kid just hung on your leg? <laughs> Do you remember when your 21-year-old hung on your leg? <laughs> and now he says, wouldn't dare. He says, just send money, mom, and that's all that. I'll be all happy, right? So he's hanging on your wallet now, not on your leg anymore, okay? So that's what's going to happen. And you put in there Isaiah chapter 2, when there's going to be a, a call to, to go out and go to Zion. Isn't that beautiful? My people have been, been lost sheep. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Their shepherds have led them astray. Who are their shepherds? The now, can, can I say something to you very um, up to broad? You put in there Ezekiel 34. Please, 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 please. I care for you and I, I care for all of your eternal salvations. I can't save any of you, but I'm begging you, I'm begging you, and I'm begging you. Please be under men and women who love Jesus Christ, who know the Lord, who know the correct teachings. Okay? How many are there out there? Few and far between. Okay, amen? Do not put your head under kukulachas. Amen? It's a new drink in Dunkin' Donuts, all right? <laughs> Please be under men and women who love the Lord, love the church, and who know, who know the word of God, because you're going to be easily led astray. And that's the shepherds who led them astray. And you can put in there Ezekiel 34. And God says in Ezekiel 34, they haven't done their job. I'm going to do mine. And God says, I'm going to lead my people home. Okay? And God's very upset. With, and by the way, if you call yourself a shepherd, you are responsible for every person you speak in front of. See, all of you? I told the Lord, let me in now, Lord. Are you all coming in? Okay, you getting this? You getting this, Brother Peter? Turning them away on the mountains, the, fount the mountain to hill they have gone, they have forgotten their fall. Everybody's running away. Oh, that's why I go nuts when Jehovah Witnesses are walking the streets. I go absolutely nuts. You know what I want to do? Knock them out. <laughs> I don't want you to even hear a word they say. Mm -hmm. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord, their true habitation, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. We didn't do this, and guess what? They're right, because we've done this to ourselves. We let down our God, we let down our faith. Verse 8, flee from the midst of Babylon and go out to the land of the Chaldeans and the he goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring and bringing up Babylon, a company of great nations. So now who's going to overcome Babylon? The Greeks. Uh, the Persians. Oh, All right, here, here's the order. Babylon, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. That's the order. We are now under the Roman Empire still. Do you know the Roman Empire has not officially ended? We're still part of the Roman Empire. So everybody got the order? Babylon? Who takes over Babylon? Persia. Everybody over here, Iran. Who takes over Iran? The Greeks. Anybody over here, the Greeks? And then, and then Rome. And all the time when one of them was in power, all the others were extremely weak. Our Lady of Fatima said to the little kids, pray for Russia. Do you know what the little kids thought? They thought Russia was grandma down the street. Oh, what's wrong with Russia? Oh, she's such a nice old lady, Russia. Wow. And at the time of Our Lady of Fatima saying that, Russia was no power. Mm. But behind the scenes, if you see, the, there's a movie on Broadway that you're all taking me to, Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about, the, you know, about Russia. Yeah. And then it rose with the Bolsheviks in 1917 uprising. And Nicholas and Alexander were killed and murdered in, in that one rural scene. There were no power when Mary said that. And then they rose up. And now, how many know 
If I hear one more time on the news the Russian probe, I'm like, give me a break with this Russian probe, baby. Amen. <laughs> so now, that's that's the fourth problem. Everybody got it? Babylon? Mm -hmm. Persia, 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 Greece, 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 Rome. Rome. And we're still under Rome. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse uh, number 9. For behold, I am stirring up, bringing against Babylon, come in great nations from the north country. And they array themselves against her, from she shall be taken. Their arrows are like a skilled war, warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered. So what's going to happen to Babylon? Knocked off. So you can put in, who's going to do the knocking off? Persia. Well, who plunder shall be sated, says the Lord. God's going to send them against them. So how many know this is nation against nation? Are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. Though you rejoice, though you exult, because your enemy is going to be destroyed. Oh, plunderers are my inheritance. Though you are wanted as a heifer at grass, and nay likes dying, your mother shall be utterly shamed. You're going to get yours too. Hmm. Look at verse 12. She who bore you shall be disgraced. Look at verse 12. Behold, bum, 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 bum. she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a midbar, dry and desert. Because of the wrath of God, does God have really wrath? Yes. She shall not be inhabited and shall be utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled. Can you believe what Babylon's going to be? How many are appalled at Iraq right now? Anybody want to go? No. no. I was appalled when they blew up uh, Jonah. Mm. I was hoping one day maybe sneak into Iraq just for an hour visit because I would like to see I'd like to see where the Jews crossed over the Euphrates River. I would like to see where Jonah was buried. And what did ISIS do? Blew it up. And they have that ancient city, Palmyra, you know, they blew that up too. And all the ancient artifacts, they blew that up. I'd like to see, you know, the, see what kind of the culture was like. And Peter would take 3,000 pictures of each little <laughs> bug going to the side. Hiss before all our wounds. Verse 14. Set yourself in array against Babylon round about all that bend the bow. Shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Has she? Yes. Raise a shout against her, for she has surrendered. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls are fallen down. What happened to the walls of Babylon? Babylon. They're no more. For this is the vengeance of the Lord. Only God can take what? Vengeance. Amen. To do to her as she has done. Cut off from Babylon the sower. And who handles the sickle in time of harvest. She's got the harvest and she's now being what? Destroyed. Because of the sword of the oppressor, everyone who shall turn to his own people, everyone shall flee to his land. Do you see a lot of running away here? Everybody say, Israel's a hunted sheep. By the way, just for your information, if you're, if you're true to true, you can never hunt. You can't go out and shoot animals with your arrow or gun. Just for your information, you can never be a hunter if you're a choo choo. How did they eat? They, they took a lamb and they stuck a pin in the back of its neck. And they would go into the nerve, which, which would call them to die instantly. So that the animal so the animal wouldn't have any pain. You cannot you cannot go out and hunt. Yeah. I remind your father in Chipakwa, I said to him. Because he likes to go down to Texas and hunt. I'm like, and wear his big boots. I said, do you know, Jewish people don't hunt. He says, I thank God I'm a Christian. <laughs> I, I, I love that guy. <laughs> Cut off from Babylon the sower, um, verse 16. The press of everyone shall turn to his own people. Israel, verse 17, is a hunted sheep driven away by lions. Who are the lions, everybody? The sheep? The, the yeah. Right? Yeah. And what is their symbol when you go to Babylon in those times? A flying lion. With wings, right? Are you getting this? Do you see the deep meaning? First, the king of Assyria devoured them, 721 BC. Put that in there. And now Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has gnawed his bones. Therefore, by the way, the name of the king of Assyria was Sennacherib. The king is called Sennacherib. Yeah. Please don't name your grandchildren. <laughs> Sennacherib, amen? Sennacherib. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am bringing punishment on the king of Babylon in his land. Who's got the king there? Nebuchadnezzar. 
And I punished the king of Assyria. Who is the king of Assyria? Sinatra. Sinatra. What year was that? 721 BC. I will restore Israel to his pasture. He shall feed on Carmel. How many ever heard of Mount Carmel? Who was on Mount Carmel? <laughs> Elisha. <coughs> and in Bashan. What's Bashan? It's, it's a very fertile area of sheep in the northeast of Israel, Bashan. His desire shall be set on the hills of Ephraim. What's Ephraim? The centerpiece where Jesus retreated before. In John chapter 2, he goes to Ephraim to just get away for a little bit. It's the, by the way, Ephraim, just for your information, is the only town in the world that's 100% Christian. So I sent my, my furniture there, which is hardly nothing. Um, I'm going to retire there. Just to be surrounded by 100% Christians. How many like to be surrounded by 100% Christians? That's Ephraim. And in Gilead. Gilead is to the east again, and it's where you get the bomb of Gilead. In those days, in that time, says the Lord, iniquity, Avon. <laughs> Shall be sown in Israel, and there shall be none. So you won't find one a bone in Israel, and sin in Judah, and none shall be found. For I will pardon those. I underline that we're done. I will underline those who are the Shari. the word Shari again. I will underline. How many are going to be saved? The remnant. What does Jesus call them? The few. Have you ever paid attention at Mass if that ever happens? There's an expression called for the many. That's called the few. Those of us who are really paying attention and want to give our hearts and lives to Jesus. Now we're going to pick up here in two weeks. There'll be no Bible study next week, okay? So if you cancel next week, we will, we will continue in two weeks. We will begin to wrap up Jeremiah and then we'll start a brand new site. Invite new people. It'll be a brand new beginning. We won't lose anybody. Uh, there'll, there'll be maps. There'll be a great discussion. We're going through the three Pauline journeys of how to get the gospel out to the world. Amen. Okay. So it'll be a fun Bible study and you'll be looking at maps and having a great time. I don't see this week after this. So you, you'll miss the conclusion. You'll miss almost the conclusion of Jeremiah. By the way, if you want to get it, God's Word Alive today or YouTube, right? Pick it up there and you, if you miss, did you ever miss, ma'am? Yes. Well, I hope you picked up the other sessions. I, I got to check on you. There will be a test and everybody will take it. Even if you try to feign illness or vacation, I don't believe in any of that anyway. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the prophet Jeremiah and all the warnings that um, he gave all these surrounding areas to, uh, the, and all their deities are being destroyed. Father, we only have one God, the God who is Father of all and has a, a living relationship with Jesus. Bless everybody here, Lord, and may we never experience what these nations all around are. May we be true to who you are. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And your name again is?